Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is lesson one from module five, analyzing a graph. Classwork opening exercise. The graphs below give examples for each parent function we have studied this year. For each graph, identify the function type and the general form of the parent function's equation. Then offer general observations on the key features of the graph that help you identify the function type. Function types include linear, quadratic, exponential, square root, cube root, cubic, absolute value, and other piecewise functions. Key features may include the overall shape of the graph, x and y intercept, symmetry, a vertex, and behavior, domain, and range values or restrictions and average rates of change over an interval. So this is a review of the year function summary chart graph, function type and parent function, function clues, key features, observations. Okay, well this first one is obviously a straight line. If, if this continued down, it's going in the domain would be negative infinity to positive infinity. The range would be negative infinity to positive infinity. It's changing at a constant rate, which is linear. And the equation, so for starters, I'm going to name it. It's linear. And a function notation of this parent graph is, remember, y equals mx plus b is our linear equation, y slope intercept form. In this case here, the parent function is the most basic one where our b is 0 and our m is 1. Okay, The multiplicative identity for your rate of change and the additive identity for your y-intercept. And in function notation, we wouldn't call it y, we would call it f of x. And this is 1x plus 0, or simply x. Okay, so now we want to name function clues, key features, observations. So the first key feature would be the overall shape is a straight line. Generally, there is one intercept for each axis except in the case where the slope is zero. In this graph of the parent function, the x and y intercepts are the same point, zero, zero, which is called the origin. The average rate of change is the same for every interval. So if I went from 0 to 1, the rate of change is 1. If I went from 0 to 5, the rate of change is 1. If I went from 2 to 6, the rate of change is 1. If a line is horizontal, it is still a function. The slope is 0, but not if it is vertical. It is undefined. And there is no symmetry. I cannot draw a vertical line and reflect that across. It will not land on top of itself. The only symmetry would be the line reflect across the origin and land on top of itself. Okay, and this next graph is absolute value. So if I plug in x to be negative 1, the absolute value of negative 1 is 1. Negative 2, the absolute value is 2. Negative 3, the absolute value is 3. 1, the absolute value is 1. 2, the absolute value is 2. And 3, the absolute value is 3. So this is an absolute value function. parent function is f of x equals the absolute value of x. Okay, if there was a number in front here, it'd be a multiple and it'd be steeper than a slope of 1. And if I add 1 up to the inside, it would be a shift left. And if I add 1 to the outside, it'd be a shift up. So the key features are the overall shape is a v. It has a vertex, a minimum, or a maximum value depending on the sign of the leading coefficient. In this case, the leading coefficient would be positive, and therefore it has a minimum. The domain is all real numbers, and the range varies. The range depends on whether it's positive or negative and whether it's shifted. In this case, it's, the range is anything greater than or equal to its vertex. 
the average rate of change are, con are constant for all intervals with endpoints on the same side of the vertex, just like a linear equation. The function either goes up to positive infinity or down to negative infinity, but is limited by the vertex in the opposite direction. It reflects across a line of symmetry at the vertex. It may have one, two, or no x-intercepts and always has one y-intercept. It will always cross the y-axis. And it is actually a linear piecewise function. So this piece from negative infinity to zero is a linear function, which would be y equals negative x in this case. And this piecewise function from zero to positive infinity would be a linear equation of y equals x. Okay, this function here, it's going from negative infinity to positive infinity. My domain is negative infinity to positive infinity are all reals. The range is not including zero, but anything greater than zero. This will never get to zero. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger as we go very slowly, but then all of a sudden it starts to build momentum and then it takes off and there it goes. And that would be an exponential function. And the parent function is f of x equals some base a to the power of x. So the overall shape is a growth or decay function. For the parent shown here, growth, as x increases, y increases more quickly. For a decay function, as x increases, y would be decreasing. Okay, for, ex for exponential functions, the domain of x is all real numbers and the range varies but is limited. And in this case, it is limited to positive integers or positive rational numbers or irrational numbers. Okay, for this growth parent, y is always greater than zero, as I've already stated. Okay, for growth or decay functions with a vertical shift, y is greater than the value of the shift, which would be our constant at the end. In this case, it might be a little confusing. It says there is no minimum or maximum value. We will never get to zero, but there is still never a minimum because one one millionth there's always a number smaller than that that's greater than zero. One over two million. There's one smaller than that. One over two billion. And we never get to zero. So there is no minimum, yet it will never get to zero. Okay. And even though there are range restrictions for growth, the average rate of change increases as the intervals move to the right. The average rate of change can never be zero. Okay, this next one, okay, U-shaped, decreases, 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 gets to its minimum, turns, goes back up, vertical symmetry. Um, this is a quadratic. Parent function is f of x equals x squared. Think of that as ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is 1, b is 0, and c is 0. Okay, so f of x equals x squared is the parent function. The quadratic term of the function, of the, of the polynomial, where your leading coefficient is one. Okay, it is U-shaped. It has a vertex right here, which is a minimum in this case, depending on the sign of the leading coefficient. Since the parent function's leading coefficient is positive, this has a minimum. It opens upward and increases to infinity. Okay, the average rates of change are different for every interval with endpoints on the same side of the vertex. In other words, if we took an interval from the same, from opposite sides of the vertex, you would have a, an average rate of change of zero if you had picked the same x or y values. OK, 
Okay, this has symmetry across a line of symmetry. For this parent function, it is the y-axis. Okay, there may be no x-intercepts, one x-intercept, or two x-intercepts, depending on the position of the graph in relation to the x-axis. Okay, so if I draw this curve, I'm just copying it, okay? And what this means is, if I shifted this up, like so, over here, there would be no x-intercepts. The parent function is just touching at one point, or if I moved it over here, it's just touching at one point. That is called a double root, and there's one x-intercept. If I move it down a little bit so that my minimum is below the x-axis and it's opening upward, then we would have two x axes or x intercepts. Okay, and there's always going to be a y intercept. No matter where I move this thing, they keep getting wider forever and ever, so it has to cross the y axis at some given point. Okay, so if we look back at this last graph here, this is a quadratic. And the inverse of a quadratic, so whenever we take the inverse of a function, it is a reflection. Let me try that again. It is a reflection across the line y equals x. I'm still off. So if I drew this line up to the origin and then continued up to here, there, that's better. If I reflected this across this line, this green line, this point would now be here over 3. It would be right here. Actually, no, it wouldn't. It'd be down positive 3 here. And this 0 would be here, and it would turn this way and go this way, like so. But this would have to, this would no longer be a function, so we only look at half of it at a time to make it a function. And what I'm leading up to here is the inverse of taking a square is taking a square root. So this is the inverse function of this. So this is a square root function. And the parent function of that is f of x equals the square root of x. Okay, the reflection and rotation of part of the quadratic function. The reflection and rotation of part of the quadratic. So I just said that. You reflect it and rotate it. No negative values for x or y. I don't know about that reflection and rotation, though. If you reflect it across y equals x, it's just a reflection. Related to the graph of x equals y squared, but only allows non-negative values, zero and positives. There may be none or one x and y intercept, depending on the position of the graph in relation to the axes. These graphs always have an endpoint, which can be considered a minimum or a maximum value of the function. And that would be right here because this continues to infinity so it doesn't have an endpoint to the right. There are domain and range restrictions depending on the position of the graph on the coordinate plane. And square root functions do not have symmetry. Okay, this function here. increases and it almost looks like a if we just took this negative piece down here and flipped it up it would look like a parabola but this was reflected down and that is a cubic and the parent function of a cubic is f of x equals x to the third power zero cubed is zero one cubed is one two cubed is eight Negative 1 cubed is negative 1. Negative 2 cubed is negative 8. Okay. Okay, the overall shape of the parent function is a curve that rises gently and then appears to level off and then begins to rise again. So we're rising up and then it levels off and then it takes off again. The parent function has one x and one y intercept in the parent graph. Both are the point zero zero. The parent graph skims across either side of the x-axis where it crosses. 
If the leading coefficient is negative, the curve reflects across the y-axis. And it would be decreasing. It would be decreasing, flattening out, and decreasing. Okay, and there is no symmetry. No line symmetry anyway. Okay, this function here looks like the one we just did, which was a cubed function, cubic. And this one looks like it's rotated and reflected. And that would be a reflection across y equals x. So therefore, that is an inverse function of the cubic. And therefore, it is a cube root function. And the parent function is f of x equals the cubed root of x. Okay, the overall shape is a rotation and reflection of the cubic, an S-curve. The domain x is all real numbers. Would the range also be all reals? Hmm, I would say so. X and Y have the same sign. Okay, the function has one X and one Y intercept no matter where you shift it around. And for the parent graph, the X and Y intercepts are the same point zero, zero, which is the origin. Okay, now that we've reviewed all the parent functions from this year, Let's start example one, and it says Eduardo has a summer job that pays him a certain rate for the first 40 hours each week and time and a half for any overtime hours. The graph below shows how much money he earns as a function of the hours he works in one week. Okay, so let's just take a look at this for a moment. So if he works zero hours, he makes zero dollars. If he works 22 hours, they've labeled this. He makes $198, I think is what that says. And if you work 60 hours, it's 630, 70 hours, $755. So at this point right here where it turns, that's at the 40 hour mark. So his pay rate is constant until he gets to 40 hours. And then anything over 40 is time and a half. So if he made $10 an hour here, then it would be 10 times 1.5 or $15 an hour up here, for example. So now let's answer the questions about this graph. Exercise one says, write the function in analytical symbolic form for the graph in example one. A, what is the equation for the first piece of the graph? Okay, so we know it's linear and we know that he made $0 for zero hours and you made $198 for 22 hours. Okay, so to find a linear equation, which we have, we need slope and y-intercept. We already know the y-intercept is zero. We just need to find the rate of his pay, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which is 198 divided by 22. Hey Siri, what's 198 divided by 22? 198 divided by 22 is 9. Okay, so his pay rate is $9 per hour. So I know that the equation for the first piece of the graph is y equals 9x. Okay, part B says, what is the equation for the second piece of the graph? Okay, now if I go back, the second piece of the graph is the point 40, 360, right? Because we just found out that he makes $9 an hour and 9 times 40 is 360. So that's the point 40 comma 360. And we have these two points that they already gave us. So instead of using our point, we can use the two they gave us, which is 60, 630. That's hard to read. Okay. 
Okay, so here's the two points. They're hard to read, but it's 6,630 and 70, 765. So we want to find the slope. So the f we have 60, comma, whoops, let's move this down here, 630, and we have the point 70, for 70 hours, he made $765. So I want to find the slope, which is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. I'll do the easy one first. 5 minus 0 is 5. 6 minus 3 is 3. 7 minus 6 is 1. So 10 goes into 135 13.5 times. And notice they said it was time and a half. Well, half of 9 is 4.5. So 150% of 9 is 13.5. So he makes 13.50 an hour for overtime. So the equation for the second piece of the graph is y equals 13.50x, and we need a y-intercept. Now if we use the point-slope formula, it's y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So it's y minus my y1, which was 630, equals my slope, which is 13.5, times my x1, which was 60. So y is going to equal, hang on, i got to do the right side first, y minus 600 equals 13.5 times 60, 0. 6 times 5 is 30, carry the 3. 6 times 3 is 18, plus 3 is 21, carry the 2. 6 times 1 is 6, plus 2 is 8. There is a decimal, so it's 810. If I add 60, or 600 to both sides, I get y equals Okay, I need to fix this. Just one moment. I'm running out of room here, so I'm trying to squeeze it in, and I made a mistake. So let me erase this, and let me move it over so I'm not cramped. Let me move this here. It will work it, and then I'll erase it for the next problem. So I have y minus y1, 630, equals my slope, 13.5, times x minus 60 and I didn't distribute. So I have y, that should be minus, y minus 630 equals 13.5x minus If I add 630 to both sides, I get y equals 13.5x minus 180. So it's 810, negative 810 plus 630 is negative 180. So I had to find the y-intercept. What that means is if this line continued straight, this way, so let me get my ruler. Actually, no, I can just do this. So if I had this point here and it continued straight like this, it's going to cross down here at negative 180 if that was a straight line. Okay, so now it says what are the domain restrictions for the context? Okay, well, do you ever go to work and have to pay to be there? I don't think so. So one restriction, obviously, is we have to be greater than zero hours. So looking at the graph, I can't go negative hours. I can't go this way. 
and earnings dollars, I don't ever go to work and owe money, hopefully. Quit your job if you spend money working. Um, so our restrictions are, and then is this infinite? Well, yes, because it's a week and 24 hours in a day, seven hours in a week is 168 hours in a week. You cannot work more than 168 hours because there's only 168 hours in a week. And there are labor laws that wouldn't even allow that. Okay, but with if you're not even considering laws, then hours have to be greater than zero. And your hours have to be less than or equal to 168 hours. D says to explain the domain in the context of the problem. So the domain is our horizontal axis here. It's time and hours. So the domain means you work anywhere from zero hours to the 168 hours in a week. So the domain is zero to 168. I should not have that in parentheses. That is an X comma Y. The domain is X or hours is greater than or equal to zero, but less than or equal to 168. That is our domain. So in set builder notation, we would say domain is the set of all H such that H is between zero and 168. Okay, now it says for each graph below, use the questions and identified ordered pairs to help you formulate an equation to represent it. First of all, this function type is exponential. The parent function is f of x equals a to the x. The transformation here it appears the graph could be that of a parent function because it pa because it passes through the point zero one. So if I took the a x is zero, then no matter what a is, anything to the power of zero is one. And if a was one, one squared is one, or one to the first power is one. So let's say a is 1, 1 to the x. Actually, anything other than 1, it's got to be greater than 1, right? So let's say a was 2. 2 to the 0 is 1. 2 to the 1 is 2. But this one is 3. So we're leading up to an equation here now. This is how you try to decide what it is. So if our base was 3, 3 to the 0 is 1. So when x is 0, y is 1. When x is 1, y is 3, and that's what appears to be. And 3 squared is 9. This only goes up to 7, but at 2, it looks like we're getting closer and closer to 9. So the transformation, it looks like a parent function. There is no transformation. The equation then in this case would be f of x equals 3 to the x. Okay, this function here starts at the point 0, 0. It does not continue below. It's rising up and then it's starting, the, the rate it increases starts to slow. That looks like x squared. So I'd say that is a square root function. Parent function is f of x equals the square root of x. There is no transformation here because I believe that zero, square root of zero is zero. The square root of, now when we're plugging in an x, 
If x is 1, the square root of 1 is not 2. So we need to make an adjustment here. There is some sort of transformation. So checking for a stretch or shrink, shrink factor, we're going to use this point right here of 4, 4. So if we use 4, 4, what does that mean? Well, that means that our y, f of x, has to equal the square root of 4. And there's some a in front of it. Remember, the parent function is f of x is a times the square root of x. There can be any number out in front here. So if we write that, let me, instead of squeezing it in, so our parent function is f of x is some multiple of a square root. It's still a parent function. a is usually 1 for the parent. But in this case, if it's shifted or transformed, then a is something different. Or we could have a constant added to it to shift it up, but that is not a case here. So there is no b added to that. So we just have some a to the power of, so this is my y right here. And this 4 is my x from my parent function. So now I want to find a value of a that will make this true, so I solve for a. Well, the square root of 4 is 2. So if I divide both sides by 2, then I get a equals 2. So my transformation would be f of x equals 2 square root x. Okay, so f of x equals 2 times the square root of x. It's a scale multiple, which would stretch it, widen it. Now, I don't want to just use one point. So if we use the other point, if I use the point 1, 2, this is my x and this is my y. And my function f of x equals a so my x in this case let's use that as y equals y equals a square root x my y is 2 and I don't know what a is and I want to know what the square root of 1 is then I say 2 equals a times 1 well therefore a equals 2 because 1a is a so a equals 2 so it came out to be the same. So our equation is f of x equals 2 square root x. So the transformation is a stretch. Okay, number four. This is a cubic. The parent function is f of x equals... x cubed, and I'll put an a here. It could be any a x cubed. Okay, so I look at this graph. It is not going through the origins, so it looks like it's shifted up. Vertical shift or shifted vertically. It's not shifted horizontally because my symmetry or where it changes direction and is right here the the midpoint of my so it increased it flattened out and then it started to increase again this is the point where it turned and crossed the y-axis so it's not shifted left or right because the turn is right there on the y-axis so it's just a vertical shift okay so the equation is we need to check for stretch or shrink with our point. So let's use negative 1, 1. Oops. Negative 1. What am I doing? 1. We're going to use the point negative 1, comma 1. And if we have our equation y equals ax cubed, y is 1, 
a negative 1 cubed 1 equals a times, well, negative 1 to the third power is negative 1. So I multiply or divide by negative 1 both sides, and a equals negative 1. Okay, but if a equaled negative 1, this would come down like this, turn this way, and go like that. Okay, so we know it's not a equals negative 1, so we need to manipulate this some way to make a positive. So in order to do that, if I simply look at this, 0, 2, then it looks like it's shifted up 2. Well, a shift up 2 would be plus 2 at the end. So if I put a plus 2 here all the way through, then I would get ax cubed plus 2, which is a to the negative 1 cubed plus 2, which is a times negative 1 plus 2. And then if I subtract 2 here first, so I want to get rid of this dividing. So first, before I divide, I have to get rid of this 2. So if I subtract 2 from both sides, then I get negative 1 equals negative a. And then if I divide both sides by negative 1 again, I get the positive a equals 1. Okay, so that means there is no stretch or shrink when a equals 1. So that we proved with our point 1, 1. I'm just going to clear this to make room. Okay, now I'm going to check with 2 comma 10. So this is my x, this is my y. y equals a x. x is 2 cubed plus 2. So I now have a parent, that's the parent function, but I'm thinking it's shifted up 2, so there should be a plus 2 here. So now I'm going to, oh, and a was 1, by the way, so I don't need to have that there. So it's just simply 10 equals 2 cubed plus 2, and I'm checking that. So 10 equals 8 plus 2, and 10 equals 10. So it's true up here as well. So it appears that our equation is f of x equals x cubed plus 2. Okay, this looks like a rotation and a flip of what we did, which was a cubic. So this looks like a cube root. All right, so parent function of a cube root is f of x equals the cubed root of x. Okay, this one here, if this was right here, that would be the parent function. This is shifted to the right one. So if I have a transformation, then it would look like, uh, let's just say, shift right one. Now remember, left and right shifts are opposite inside the function, inside the grouping. OK, so now an equation. We're going to use the point 9, 2. So 9, comma, 2 is x, comma, y. So if we use our parent function or a function that appears to be shifted, then our equation would look like y equals ax cubed. Sorry, it's cube root. A times the cube root of x, and since it shifted right one, that's a minus one inside the grouping. So here's what we're working with. So we have a y, which is 2. We're trying to find a to see if it's a stretch or a shrink. And then the cube root of x minus 1. So 2 equals some a times the cube root of 8. 2 equals a times the cube root of 8 is 2. 
divide both sides by 2, and A equals 1. So that means that there is no stretch or shrink. So now I just want to check to see, so I'm going to just erase this. So now I want to check to see if my other point works with just a right shift. So my equation, it appears to be f of x equals the cubed root of x minus 1. So now I'm going to check this point 0, negative 1. So if x is 0, y is negative 1, then I'd have negative 1 equals the cubed root of 0 minus 1. And negative 1 equals the cubed root of negative 1. And negative 1 equals negative 1. And that checks. So this is the function. Moving to the number six, this is U-shaped. It looks like it's opening upward. It's, it looks like a parabola, so that is called a quadratic. Parent function of a quadratic is f of x equals a x squared, or just x squared parent function, there is no a. a is 1, so the parent function is x squared. Transformations, well, if the parent function would have been here, this is shifted right 1 and up 2. So if I shift x squared right 1, okay, a right shift would be minus 1, and then an upward shift of 2 is outside. So this is what my function would look like unless there's a stretch. So we have to make sure there isn't a stretch first. And we're going to use the 0, 5 point right here, the y-axis, to determine whether or not there is a stretch. So using our parent function, or this function right here that we just came up with, plug in y, 5 x is 0, 5 equals negative 1 squared plus 2, and 5 equals 1 plus 2, 5 does not equal 3. Okay, so we need an a. So there is an a in this case. All right, since these are not equal, I will work backwards, go backwards to a, to a point, and I'll put an A in front of the parentheses. That is a stretch or a shrink. So now I put an A here and put all these values back in. 0 minus 1 squared plus 2. 5 equals A times negative 1 squared plus 2. 5 equals a plus 2, negative 1 squared is 1, 1 times a is a, subtract 2 from both sides, and a is 3. Okay, so now we know that a equals 3. Now let me just get this out of the way. And move on. Okay, now we're going to check with the point 2, 5. So we had the function f of x equals 3 x minus 1 squared plus 2. Shifted right 1, shifted up 2, and stretch 3. So f of x, we want to know what the value of x is when y is, well, let's use a different point. Let's use 2, 5. So y is 5, x is 2, and we're checking. 5 equals 3 times 1 squared plus 2. 5 equals 1 squared is 1. 1 times 3 is 3 plus 2. 5 equals 5. It checks. So my transformation is left 1 up 2 stretch by a factor of 3. Okay, so my equation is right here. Three times quantity x minus one squared plus two. Okay, that is the end of a lengthy lesson. 
review the lesson summary and go do